Hey, it's good to be with you. Welcome in. Thank, thank you to the one. Are person you guys awake? Clapping. Good morning. You didn't have your ice cream yet? Man, I'm sorry about that, bro. Neither did I. Nah, I think Just about go it. Go get a pint of Ben and Jerry. We should Jerry's leave and go get ice cream. No, no, this no. is better. We got, than we ice got cream. time. We got, we got, we got. Praise the Lord today. Yes, we do. Hey, we have a great, 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 great day for you guys tonight. But we have a few announcements. Nathan, what's going on this weekend? Do you know what's going on this weekend? We have church this weekend. Who Come likes on. church? Me, me, me. Our church services are at five on Saturday. 9 a.m. on Sunday and 10.45 on Sunday. What's special about 10.45 on Sunday? <laughs> middle school group. Middle school, middle school group. group. Raise what? your hand if you've been to middle school group before. Like all of you should be raising your hand because it's the most fun Nathan, ever. Where is it at? It is in the summit room upstairs over that way. Over yonder? Over yonder. You'll find it. Okay. Nice. <laughs> Just cool. wander till you find it. <laughs> You'll figure it out. There, there <laughs> no, might be a ask sign. somebody. They'll show you where it is. It's upstairs. If you haven't been before, we'll help you get there. It's super fun. We play games, talk about Jesus and stuff. It's great. It's a good time. It's a really good time, actually. It's a really good time. Yeah. We'll, th we'll think about it, Charlie. Uh, hey, we also want to make you guys aware of something, okay? Shh. We want to invite you guys, especially to March 16th and 17th, our high school baptism service. Woo! Do we have a slide for that, Colby? I don't know if we do. But it is going to be March 16th and 17th where our, our high school students, oh, so far 11 of them are signed up. More will be signing up. Of course. But they will be coming and being baptized before everybody at Good Shepherd. So it's going to be a good time. We're, we're encouraging all students, middle school and high school students, to come to each service. I know it might sound like a task. It might Whoa. sound like a lot. But it's actually going to be really fun, okay? Being there on Sunday, at Saturday uh, the 16th at 5, and then Sunday at 9 a.m. and 1045, there will be high school students who are baptized at each and every service. Uh, also, like the, whole youth minute, like the whole youth staff is going to be doing it. Uh, running the whole service. It's going to be a good time. So we want to encourage you guys, be there. Be Invite your parents. Come. It's going to be great. We want you guys there on March 16th and 17th. If you're not putting it in your calendar, I'm going to talk to you about it later. Uh, that's all I got. You got anything uh, else? I got one more thing. Oh, okay. We're in for a great night tonight, you guys. That's my thing. So let's pay attention and have fun tonight, <laughs> okay? Okay. okay. All right. Well, hey, Nathan, why don't you close us out in prayer? A little mic switch. All right, let me pray for us before we get up on and we get to worship. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this evening. Thank you that we get to come and just have so much fun with each other, hanging out, and uh, now we get a chance to worship you. I pray that our hearts would uh, be quieted and calmed down, and we would understand what we're doing, and we would stay focused, and we'd be excited that we get to sing praise to you, that we get to uh, tell you how much we love you and how worthy you are and that we get to listen to our staff and leaders talk and teach us tonight about your gospel and your good news. Um, I just pray that our hearts would be moved, that we would be respectful and, and listen to the people that are talking and the, that we would worship and praise you, Lord. We pray this all in your son's name. Amen. Please stand. Please stand. Upon the one who bled to save. 
join the resurrection and stand beside the heroes of the faith and with one voice a thousand generations sing worthy is the lamb who was slain and on that day we join the resurrection and stand beside the heroes of the
Christ is risen. Bow down before Him, for He is Lord of all. Sing Alleluia, Christ is risen. message tonight God uh, I just pray that we'll all have a good week and just that you'll just be with us through any hard time or good time that we're going through I just pray that you'll be with us amen Test, test, test. I think we're good. Yeah. Well, right, give it up for the worship team again. It is such a, they do such a good job every week. Um, well, hey, I'm thankful you guys are here. It's good to be with you. Uh, if you guys are looking at this and you're like, this is a little different. Why is this dude with a beanie up here? Uh, this is Aiden. He's one of our middle school leaders. Uh, he's going to be helping me out today. He's going to be sharing. We're both going to be sharing. Uh, opening up this series uh, that's called Come Follow Me. Uh, Come Follow Me is uh, out of this idea of Mark 4 where Jesus is, he's, he's going out and he's finding his first disciples. He's finding the first few people that are going to be part of his 12 that are going to go out and uh, share the good news with people, go out and help him in reaching lost people. And when he goes and he finds these two people, he's, he comes up to them and they're fishing. And he's talking to them, having a conversation with them. Ultimately, what he says to them is, come follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Come follow me. Leave the stuff that you have behind. Give your life to this movement, to give your life to, to the Lord. And I will make you a fisher of man. I will make you a helper to reach people for God's glory and for his kingdom. Um, and so tonight, what we're going to be starting with is one of the basics of this series, one of the basis, basics of what it means to come and follow Jesus, and that is the gospel. The gospel is the key, the central thing, the central focus of what we as Christians believe in in order to come and follow Christ. Now, the gospel... The gospel is the story of, of God's constant and, and, and consistent love of us. It's of his pursuit of us, regardless of what we've done or said. God is pursuing us. He's running after us. And so the gospel, it's his love story. It's how he made a way for us to have a relationship with him and to repair what man had broken. Um, and, and what the gospel will do is it's going to impact our lives now and for eternity. 
Like belief and faith in the gospel story will change who you are for now and for the rest of your life and for even after your life. Um, it's the story of God sending his son, Jesus. His son, Jesus, who's fully God and fully man, who made no mistake, who made no sin, who made no error, no lapse of judgment. And he, was, he lived a perfect life. And then he gave up his life. He sacrificed his life. He died on a cross and then rose again. He resurrected, came back to life three days later, which is showing the power of God, right? It shows that God has power over death. He has power over sin. And Christ's resurrection, it conquered that power. And what it did was by us placing our faith in him, by us believing in our hearts and our minds and saying with our mouths that Jesus is Lord and Jesus is the Son of God and what he did is real, what that does for us is it allows us to enter into this relationship with God, one that will change our lives forever. And here at Good Shepherd, what we believe is that if you can truthfully say, I have put my faith in Jesus and depend solely on his life, death, and resurrection for my salvation. That if you can believe that and say that, then you believe in the gospel. That's, I think that's as simple as we can make it right there. I have put my faith in Jesus and depend solely on his life, death, and resurrection for my salvation. This comes out of Romans 10, 9 through 10, which says, because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For, the heart, for with the heart, one believes and is justified. And with the mouth, one confesses and will be saved. It is this faith, the faith uh, that believes in the gospel, that we here are encouraging you guys to participate in. We're encouraging you and teaching you every single week, believe this, believe this, believe this. Why? Because we believe that it can have life-changing power. Our goal is that one day each of you would be able to believe and say that you believe in Jesus and depend solely on him, for, on his life, his death, and resurrection for your salvation. And this isn't just something that, that we're encouraging you guys to do. This is something your leaders believe as well. Like you guys take a look at your small group leaders. Each one of them can say with confidence that they believe this. Your staff, Nathan, Jenny, Jarrell, myself, we all believe this too. And we also have Aiden here, who's a middle school leader, who also believes in this as well. So Aiden, why don't you tell, share with us for a little bit about what kind of drew you to the gospel? And tell us a little bit about yourself and your story and what brought you to the gospel. Uh, yeah, so uh, first of all, I, uh, I did not grow up in a Christian household. Uh, my family kinda believes in Jesus. We're getting there. I've been talking to them a lot, but um, I came to know the Lord through my friend Sam, who invited me to youth group, and uh, that's what really drew me in. I went to a youth group in middle school, but I wasn't really living out what the Bible was telling me to do, and um, yeah, no, I'm glad I went to youth group with Sam. So you, yeah, so Sam, Sam's a friend of yours, you guys hang out. Yeah, you know him. Yeah, I, I do know him, I do know him, Sam's a good dude. Uh, and so like, the Lord used your friend. He used yeah. your friend to bring you in and kind of share with you who Jesus is and like what this whole experience is like being at church and believing in the gospel. Uh, but like, what was it specifically about the gospel that made you choose to believe it? Um, I, uh, I grew up in a rough, abusive household situation and uh, I was really lost in the world with everything and all these temptations and... Um, like I said, uh, my friend invited me to youth group. I heard the gospel and the miracles of Jesus. I heard about God and his plans for you. Even when you don't feel like he has any plans for you, he does. Um, at first, I took those messages in, and I was like, oh, I guess that's cool. Um, and I chose to believe it, but not live out anything he was telling me to do. Um, back in freshman year, before I even knew my friend Sam, who invited me, I managed to get out of my dangerous household situation and um, I got out safely. Like, it w it's still like a weird situation, but I didn't get hurt. 
And um, I got to go live with my mom, who shows me love like Jesus would. Um, after going to church for a while, I began to see this as a miracle to me because if I stayed living with my dad, I have no idea what would end up happening. I wouldn't have switched schools and um, been invited to youth group by my friend. I would have stayed living in constant sin. I wouldn't have realized there was a savior and my life would serve no purpose. But now I'm here and I'm living for God and I'm loving it. Not to say there aren't storms I'm still dealing with, but God's got me. That's good. That's good. Um, yeah, right. Like, I mean, when you give your life to the Lord, like, I think what some people can misinterpret uh, when, especially like, we're up here sharing with you, like, why you should give your life to Jesus. And it's not just us, it's other people as well. Um, and we're like, oh, like, life is so much better. Like, it's just changed for the good. And that's true. Like, we're not out here to give you false advertisement. Like, the Lord changes our lives, and it's for the best. Like, God's plan is always good. But if you notice, like, I mean, Aiden, you shared, a, you, you mentioned this, but like, even when you give your life to the Lord, and we just came out of a series talking about this, but like, there's still storms that come your way. There's still things that will hit you about life. And what gets you through oftentimes is your faith in Jesus. What you can like see is how God's faithfulness will shine through. Uh, but Aiden, like you shared, can you just like dive in a little bit deeper onto like what storms or how you've seen the Lord rescue you in the middle of a storm? Uh, yeah, uh, last school year, I dealt with drama in my youth group I was going to at the time. I not good shepherd to be clear. Um, the group has had a major divide since. It's really sad to see how things escalated and ended up. Um, I was confused as to why they called themselves Christians, but showed me really immense anger and absolutely no love. Seeing this as the group that in the previous years wanted to bring me to Jesus when I didn't know him, I didn't understand why they were behaving this way. Uh, God used my friends Hayden and Luke to help me though. They told me just because these people misrepresented Jesus doesn't mean that's how Jesus acts to me. Just, uh, Jesus absolutely loves you no matter what. They told me to not worry about what was going on because all that mattered was keeping my eyes set on Jesus. Um, I've held on to these friendships with Hayden and Luke and we ended up going to Dunes together and after that we started going to Good Shepherd. That's cool, that's cool. Yeah. Sometimes the Lord, and like we said this earlier, but sometimes the Lord what he wants to do is he wants to use the people around you to help you out of that pit, to help you in whatever your time of need is, to help you in the middle of a storm, and oftentimes to help you see God, right? I mean, that's what Aiden's friends did is they came around him and consistently and continually to this day are pointing him towards Jesus even when life is difficult. That's part of the camaraderie. That's part of the community that, that's to be found in the body of Christ, and I mean, and you probably wouldn't have been able to see like what the Lord was doing if you didn't have them, right? Like to have these people around you who love you and care about you and also love Jesus and care about him when they're able to be like, hey, like the Lord is moving. He's doing something in this. Like it gives, it probably gives you confidence, right? Like it, I, it, I know it has for me as well. Like the Lord has used people in my life to show me confidence, to show me how the gospel is actually moving. Like how the gospel in real life, how the Lord is using it for good. Um, now, the gospel, faith in the gospel, it isn't just something that we believe in. It's not just something that, like we can sit here and say, oh yeah, I believe in the gospel without any life change. Like there is outward fruit, outward expression of how belief in Jesus impacts us. So Aiden, how, how have you seen the gospel impacted your life, like practically? Uh, before I started living my faith out, um, I was... I was very, very obnoxious and didn't like to listen to anyone whatsoever. I listened to my parents though, but when it came to school, I didn't have respect for anyone except for close friends. Um, I liked to be different and acted like I didn't care if people liked me or not, but really I did care. And um, I liked to argue every single opinion someone had, even if I agreed just to get on their nerve. Um, I didn't show love because I wasn't being shown love at home. I always felt like no one loved me, but I was also just putting myself in that place. I constantly made jokes and tried to be the funny one to mask my feelings. I tried to take control of every situation, but I always failed. 
God showed me that he loves me when nobody else does. He forgave me for every sin, even though I think I don't deserve this forgiveness. God always forgives though. God showed me that he has a plan for me. I began to let God take control. I no longer felt that I needed to be loved because I was receiving unconditional, everlasting love from God. Uh, when I let God have the control, I ended up being happier. I got baptized in April last year, and I've been helping with church. I'm a sixth grade boys leader. I go to high school group consistently. I even try to if I'm sick, even if my mom says no. Um, and I'm aiming to help out more in the future. I know that God has a plan for me, and I trust it. Yeah, but see, what the Lord wants is the Lord wants to use the gospel to change your life. Like, I mean, you just heard Aiden, like, the gospel has drastically changed the way you live, who you are, like your character. It's impacted the people you surround yourself with. Like the gospel has changed you. And again, like you, if you were to ask your leaders the same question, like how has the gospel changed your life? I'm sure they would share with you, man, like the gospel has changed everything. Like it's not just a change of thought or it's a change of one simple action or habit that you have. No, what the gospel is after is life change from, from broken and lost in need of a savior to found and loved and have found a savior. Like that is what the Lord wants to do in and through you, through faith in the gospel, through faith in Jesus. This is what we call sanctification. It's the process of us becoming more and more like Jesus, us learning about Jesus, his life, how he lived, who he was, how, like what he believed, and taking that and see, like reflecting our own lives to that and being like, okay, in what ways am I like Christ? In what ways am I not? How can I strive to be more and more like him? That sanctification piece, it's something that never ends. Uh, I mean, you could ask our elders of our church, hey, are you fully sanctified? If one of them says yes, they're lying. Uh, no one is fully sanctified because we're all in this process of becoming more and more like Jesus. It's never you've arrived or you've gotten there or you've accomplished it. It is, I'm always working. I'm always a work in progress. And there's beauty in that. There's beauty in that because you as a sixth or seventh or eighth grade student are in the same sanctification process as a 70, 80, or 90 year old believer in Christ. And, and what we are called to do is we're supposed to be in this pursuit of being Christ-like together as a community. Like that's why you guys come here on Tuesday nights is that you guys can come together as the body and encourage one another to become more and more like Christ. To, to sometimes, and it's uncomfortable, I'm sure you've experienced this, but like to call out when you see someone falling short. Like your friend is just not pulling their weight in the Christ-like department. And you're just like, hey, like I see this in you. Like, I want to encourage you to, like, to be better. To, to, like, whether it's, like, a lack of faith in an area or it's lack of an action in another, to call them up and call them out. Or, like, to encourage. To be like, hey, like, let's do this together. Like, as the body of Christ, that's how the gospel moves in us through community, is through encouraging and bettering one another. Through, like, iron sharpens iron, sharpens iron as one man sharpens another. Um, 2 Corinthians 3, 18, it says, And we all with unveiled face, beholding the, the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. What Paul is saying here is that when we place our faith in Jesus, our eyes, they've been opened. Like we're able to actually see who Jesus is and what he has done. And what that realization will do is it will begin to transform the way we live our lives day in and day out. Whether that be little habits that we put away or long-standing temptations that we begin to say no to, faith in the gospel should leave a lasting impression on how we live our lives and how we live out the gospel. In closing, Aiden, how... Can you share just for a moment, how do you live out your faith in the gospel? Uh, yeah, uh, I, I aim to read my Bible every day, but I don't always. It's like, it's okay. Just aim to read it every day. Um, I aim to invite three people to youth group a week. Uh, I do feel fear of people saying no and not liking me, but I also think about wanting to see everyone around me 
and heaven, and that overpowers that fear. I bring my Bible to school, and even just that, people will see it and be like, oh, like, you got a Bible? I'm like, yeah, you want to talk about it? And most people do. I haven't heard a person say no. Um, uh, I post Bible passages and encouragements on my Instagram because I know it's important to share about Jesus, especially when social media is just targeted to be all about your image and making yourself look good. So you can turn that into a positive. Um, I know a good amount of people will choose to ignore the things I do, but these are just small things we can do to represent Christ. And um, what if there's that, like, that chance that you end up helping someone out of darkness and bring them to the light of God. Like, that would be amazing. That's good. In closing, um, the gospel has incredible power. Like, it has the power to change your life. And what we talk to you guys about week in, week out, is to believe in this gospel and place your faith in it because it's true. Like, it is God, how he pursued and loves you so much that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Like the Lord loves you so much. He allowed his one and only son to die. Like that is sacrifice. That is payment. That's payment that we don't deserve, but yet God freely gives because he loves you and wants you. He wants your heart and he wants your life. Uh, and will you close? And then you guys are going to break out into small groups and talk a little bit more about the gospel, how it's impacted your life, and maybe even the people around you. Uh, but you can close in prayer, and then you guys yeah. go to small group. Dear Lord, I just want to pray for everybody in this room and that they got something out of the message and will learn something through it. And I just want to pray for small group time and that everybody has a good time discussing and... In Jesus' name, amen.